Hey guys, welcome to our second unit here in chapter one. We are going to be talking about some really big names in psychology. This is kind of the first chunk of the big names. The second chunk will be our next unit here. So let's go ahead and get started. Our objective for today is to um, be able to list and describe the contributions of the following big names in psychology. Wilhelm Wundt, we've actually talked about him a little bit in the past, so we're going to get a little more in depth with him. Mary Calkins and Sigmund Freud, so off we go. Um, but first, before we get super into things, uh, there is a crash course video in your Canvas studios that you will need to watch. Um, it's called Intro to Psychology. Okay, There will be questions that pop up, and that will be for a grade. Now, getting started with our famous figures, uh, before we get started, I want to talk to you about why we're introducing ourselves to all of these different people. Um, it doesn't matter in what subject you are in in school, whether it be math or science, English, history, psychology, whatever, there are famous figures or people who set kind of foundations for that field of study that we build off of now. Um, so we are going to start talking about those people. Wilhelm Wundt, this guy over here, um, we talked about him a little bit a while back. He is kind of considered the modern day, or sorry, the father of modern day psychology. In 1879, he created that very first psychological laboratory in Leipzig, Germany, where he and his colleagues studied what he uh, later called introspection. Introspection is really interesting. You might still hear this word tossed around today, um, but what this is is a process of examining and measuring your thoughts and mental activities. Now, this sounds kind of cool, but there's a problem with it. You can't really measure thoughts, okay? Um, how can I measure my uh, feelings about a person against another person's feelings about a different person. It's really not possible. Um, and Wundt and his colleagues came to find that this was sort of a problem. Um, and what happened is that introspection eventually ended, okay, um, and another kind of perspective or field of psychology came about that was called structuralism. It was not around for very long, and I'll tell you why. So structuralism was a way to look at human thoughts, behaviors, cultures, and experiences. Much like introspection, there was this measuring involved. But again, there's a problem with measuring the structure of the human mind, because here's the thing. Every single person is different. We all have different um, ideas we all have different perspectives. We all have different ways of looking at the world. And we all have different ways we were raised. Some of us had great childhoods, some of us not so much. Even identical twins would be different in this structuralist kind of idea. We, they wouldn't have the same type of mind. So fun fact, Structuralism died out super fast because scientists in the world could not set up a step-by-step, -step, this is how you do it kind of situation. They couldn't agree on how to conduct experiments, which was kind of funny um, because it kind of made the whole science explode. Please enjoy my mushroom cloud. You're welcome. Moving on to another person, Mary Calkins, this lady over here. Um, she's really important in the world of psychology because back in the day, uh, girls, women were not really a part of this particular field because, let's face it, this was a very man, uh, male-driven uh, field. But she was like, well, that's cool. And she went on to get the, her PhD from Harvard, okay? But, here's the thing, but Harvard did not award her the actual diploma. She did all the tests and all the quizzes and all the coursework required to gain this, and she passed everything. But Harvard said no because she was a woman. She didn't let that stop her. She went on to become the first female to create a psychological laboratory that was all female-driven, meaning that it was staffed by only ladies, um, at Wellesley College. They conducted their own psych uh, psychological experiments. 
And she went on to kind of be a pioneer for women. She also became the first female president of the American Psychological Association. This is really a big deal because, guys, the APA, American Psychological Association, or APA, is still around today, okay? Um, they do, uh, they, they hold conferences all over the world. They have, uh, you know, journals and, and different types of publications that are cutting edge in the world of psychology. She was... The leader of that for a while. That's really, really cool. Sigmund Freud, he's a big name in psychology. Um, you may think of him when you think of that whole laying on the couch, smoking the cigar situation. Um, that would be Sigmund Freud. Um, Sigmund Freud is famous for his work in psychoanalysis, or what we call psychoanalytic theory. This is the study of the unconscious mind and the study of consciousness. Consciousness is your ability to understand that you are aware of your surroundings. You are aware that you are sitting wherever you are right now, whether it's in the classroom or in front of your TV. Okay, You are consciously aware. And motives. We'll talk about motives a little bit later. He was also very famous for the iceberg theory. You may hear in the world of psychology that whole, the tip of the iceberg, where you have this iceberg and there are different sections on that iceberg that represent a person's personality. Freud believed we all have uh, these particular pieces to ourselves, the id, or the very childlike piece, the ego, or the manager, or kind of like taskmaster, and the superego, or the common sense, or sorry, the uh, superego is the moral compass, right? All must be done well. Um, I like to use Harry Potter here for an example, because the id, ego, superego is super prevalent here. We have our id, Ron, okay? He's very childlike, kind of annoying if I'm just being real, okay? Then we have our ego, which is Hermione over here. She's very uh, driven, very cunning, very smart, very common sense driven. Uh, then we have our, our, our super ego right here, Harry Potter. He is very moral. Oh my goodness, I can't have you involved because you're going to get hurt. Oh, woe is me. It's, it's kind of annoying, but I love Harry Potter. So got to love my cool examples. So we're going to go ahead and stop here. Um, the next video, I will be starting with the unit, uh, you know, uh, three here. Okay, chapter one, unit three. Um, so keep an eye out for that and uh, get those mastery checks done. Thank you, guys.